Okay, good. So we're on. Yeah, so last time I went live on my Facebook page, I actually went on the wrong thing and I went on my <laughs> personal page. So now I'm live on Coaching by Temu. This is weird. I don't know what camera to look into. So let me see. Hmm, hmm, hmm. All right, let me see if I can get Kyla on here. Go live. When she comes on, I'll go live with her. Well, naturally, Natty, hi. Since you're in the room, if you have a question, now would be the time to ask it before everybody else jumps on and takes up the time. I see all my shadow in the back, but we're going to have to work with that. So today, well, this week, Thursday, Thursdays, I normally have my Level Up Ladies program for women making a pretty big investment in a six month program. Well, seven months, they get a final month, a bonus month um, for follow up and so on. And we are moving them to create systems and processes that will move them to revenues and profits more importantly of 10K or more. And so part of this week's session, we were looking at business systems and processes talking about automation, um, things like automating your money, automating your payments, putting systems and processes in place in order to free your time and in order to make doing business more efficient. And so part of that was talking about how you have contingency planning for times of uncertainty. I won't say coronavirus only, but of course, um, coronavirus is one of the things that we're talking about today. And so we had a lot of discussion on business continuity and policies that they would put in place for the coronavirus. And the reason is that even if the virus does not get here, which is very unlikely, it probably will, the thing is that people buy based on perception and fear is a very strong emotion. And because of that, it's very important to have policies that not just protect you personally and your health and the health of your clients, but also assuage or lessen the fear of people coming to you. So people want to feel safe when they come to your establishment. This is especially true for people like you, Naturally Natty, and all the other small business people that are out there engaging in business where you have to touch people. So like for me, most of my work is online unless I'm training in large rooms, which I'm not doing any of that um, this month so far. Okay. Um, so I can easily go online. But what about those of you who are interacting with people? People are interacting with you. So let's talk about some things systematically. So let's talk about your supply chain and diversifying your supply chain. So what's a supply chain? Hi, Facebook people. <laughs> what's a supply chain? Now, a supply chain, if you put it simply, is where you get your things from, where you get your goods, um, your products, your inputs from in order to carry out business. So if you're into hair, where are you getting your hair from um, and all the accessories that go with that? If you're doing nails, where are you getting your polishes from, etc. And remember the supply chain for most things, that supply chain starts in China. And China, obviously, as you know, and much of Asia, most of the things are made in Asia, Cambodia, Vietnam, Thailand, China, these kind of places their supply has been disrupted because of the virus. So obviously if they're making less things, they're shipping less things, eventually that will hit you and you will receive less things. You'll be able to buy less things in order to do your business. So what does that mean? Well, it also means that as supply decreases, price rises, right? That's the law of supply and demand. Right now, if you go online, you're gonna realize that things are becoming outrageous when it comes to pricing. So one of the first tips is look at your stock, your inventory, okay? And you want to see what are the goods 
that you're going to need or the inputs that you are going to need that you currently get from abroad and you need to use some of your working capital and you need to order those in now before A, they're out of stock, whether it's locally or through um, your mail forwarder and B, that the price is hiked up because the supply is less. Another thing that you want to do is consider alternative sources of getting stuff in. So yes, you may generally get your stuff from Miami, etc. But when you go online, you realize either the prices are um, exorbitant. Hi, Pat. The prices are exorbitant. And if the prices are exorbitant, there's high cutesy. There are some other things you can do. Now, a lot of us don't realize that we can get a lot of our products within the region. So I have clients that bottle things, you know, they sell things in bottles, whether it's liquor and that sort of thing. And I have been, even before this coronavirus, telling them that they should begin getting their inputs from other carry combinations. Why? Because especially if it's manufactured in CARICOM, it comes in duty free. So that's uh, something that people don't know. Everything does not have to come in through KDP or wherever your US mailbox forwarder is shipping from, which is generally Miami. So you want to consider what are my alternatives? Is it St. Martin? That's very close for us. Where are you going to get your product? So number one, look at your inputs that you require. And not just for the short term, because we are uncertain as to how long this situation will last. And so if you have a peak season coming up, like Naturally Natty, you're doing here, Cutesy, you're doing accessories. If you have a peak season coming up, I think a peak season would be this sports season, into school, that sort of thing. You need to stock for your peak season. So if you're stocking, you generally stock up, you need to perhaps double that, especially if your inputs are not perishable. Otherwise, you'll be facing price hikes and facing stockouts. Another thing that you can do is you can begin thinking about diversifying what you do in the event that you don't have enough product. Okay, so let's say um, Narissa is out of her beads. Oh my gosh, imagine if Narissa was out of her beads. Now, Narissa, you know you have some people in the market sneaking up on you with this bead game, and so we need to have a talk about that, Narissa. And they're sneaking up on you with the bead game, but as you know, there are many more things you can do with your talents. You can do styling, you can do other things. So you want to consider what are some ways I can diversify my product portfolio if indeed, or my service offerings, if indeed I'm facing things like stock outs, but you really shouldn't be you know, facing stock out, but it might be inevitable. It might be something you cannot help, okay? Especially, I know that as small business owners, you're often strapped for cash and you often order you know, like just in time. Well, just in time is not gonna work anymore. So you're going to have to make some decisions. All right, so inventory management, stocking up, supply chain diversification, going to other countries, other sources for supply, be innovative, all right? Think about how can I offer other things in the event my most popular items i cannot source what am i going to do to keep money coming in remember with your business model on a business model canvas you have a number of revenue streams so if you're not diversifying your offerings and having a number of revenue streams then this is a flaw in your business process okay and so this is a good time to begin thinking about multiple revenue streams. So if you're only doing here and you're only doing one type of here, that means you have one revenue stream. Not because you have a hundred clients does not mean that you have multiple streams of revenue. It means all the revenue is coming from the same place. And so this is the time to begin thinking about other revenue streams. And this is true for any 
contingencies like risk management, all right, which is why you need to have multiple revenue streams. So first tip is that diversity in service offering, supply chain, and doing your, your increase in stocks. Now, when I was a general manager of an automotive company, yes, <laughs> what we would do is we would increase our lead time, meaning the number of months before ordering when it was times like hurricane season, because we knew that supply would be disrupted. So it's a similar concept, not because you're small, you still have to think strategically in order to retain money and keep money. That's just how it works. All right. Now, another thing is allaying fears. Okay, allaying fears. Remember, perception is reality. Okay, if you didn't know that, now you know it. Perception is reality. So whatever people think, that is what they will act on, whether it is fact or fiction, because in their mind, it is fact. Now, what does this have to do with the whole coronavirus thing? It means then that you have to allay the fears of your clients, especially if you are engaging with them one-on-one. -on -one. So what are the things you are putting in place to make your clients, not just make them feel safe, but have them be safe and have you be safe as well? So what are some measures? And it's important to begin to communicate those measures publicly. And this is why. Because people cannot feel safe or their fears cannot be allayed if they are unaware of what your measures are. Hi, ADR.VK. Thank you for joining. So for instance, maybe if you are a hairdresser, you are wiping your disinfecting your chairs when people get up. You are spraying down tables. You are wearing gloves, but nobody knows. And so you're at home, you know, I'm at home. I need a hairdo, but I'm thinking, well, you know, I'm not trying to be up in nobody's salon for people to be coughing on me and these sorts of things. So what you need to do is begin using your social media in ways that are not obvious um, in order to communicate that you are prepared. So if you, you need to take a picture with you in your gloves, you need to pay, take a picture with your alcohol bottle and your wipes and show people that you are wiping down. And if you desire, you can have a coronavirus statement if you wish. So you have to begin to show people that you are ready, okay? Because once again, perception is reality. If I perceive that you are taking appropriate measures to ensure the best um, outcome in terms of non-transmission, I am more likely to visit you or continue doing business with you compared to other people. So this is important, all right? So allaying fears, visible, preparation, communicated subtly and not so subtly via all the means and media by which you normally communicate. For me, I've already put on my site that my um, network workshop, you know, depending on the situation, it's going to be online, but we have the same exciting things like the breakout rooms and so on. But that's in May, so we'll see. But I've already put that statement out on TamilCoaching.com in the event section that it will be online. And as you know, my Business Model Canvas workshop on Thursday coming, that's also online. So no one has to worry about contracting anything. And the same is true for you. What are you doing to help people feel better? Now, I want some interaction with you. What are some in-house policies you think that you should adopt in this time? So tell me, this is teacher, teacher Tamu now, teacher Tamu Petra is here. 
And if you're just joining, I'm Dr. Tamu Petra Brown of Coaching by Tamu and Innovative Education and Training Solutions. And we are here talking about business continuity in uncertain times. And our uncertain time right now is the situation with the coronavirus. So talk to me, tell me what some policies that you think might be useful to adopt in order to secure the health and well-being of yourself and your clients. Now, I can tell um, Narissa of Cutesy Accessories right now, and do share, share the live so people can come on now, that, you know, you can do all of your um, ordering, people order through your website, because I know you have a, a popping website, which she learned and built in a coaching by Tamu workshop, yes. And you have your lives. And so you can be more proactive at taking orders through those means and having people just pick up orders and not necessarily browse with you um, through the stuff. So that's one thing that you can do in order to um, engage in that kind of social distancing that everyone is talking about okay so that's one thing that's a policy like right now we are doing online orders and pickups and that's it you know no browsing no none of that so see what's online join my lives message me tell me what you need you have them there tagged with your name you would have paid already and it's just a, Pick up and go, pick up and go, pick up and go. That way you reduce that type of interaction. Now, come, come on, people. What are some other ways that you think that you can, or some policies that you think that can help, you know, allay fears and to help keep you safe? Now, some of my clients in on Thursday, they began doing some um, very serious policies. For instance, um, some won't book. They will not book if you have the flu. They will, um, they've been adding, oh, hi. Yeah, so um, how are you? I'll use your name, um, your Facebook name. So on Facebook, as Araya Johari says, I have direct contact with people. So if you have direct contact with people, then you are going to have to you know, protect yourself as well. And you have to do all of the things that they're saying, like you can wear your gloves you know, if, if that's what you require. You can wipe down your surfaces, et cetera. You can also have people you know, communicate with you more via email. Tell them, you know, send me an email. If they want a meeting, tell them, send me an email. Hop on to Zoom or Skype. Things like that um, would be helpful of direct contact. And of course, you know, you know, no handshaking and all of this stuff. But if you have direct contact with people, you have to be very particular. And you can't go wrong with, you know, looking after your health. Okay, so on Coaching by Tamu's Live, as Araya says, what I've always done and will have to amp up will be constant wiping of areas and washing of hands. Yes. And they just released yesterday a list. I think it's WHO. It is WHO, World Health Organization. They released a list of products that are suitable for dealing with the virus. And on there, they do have, they have a lot of things because, you know, it um, applies internationally. So they have a lot of products that I was not familiar with, products I wasn't familiar with, but they did have products we have in the Caribbean and they had Clorox wipes, that was one. I had these and they had Lysol and they're specific about the, um, the types, like they named them Clorox wipes, toilet cleaner and, and these sorts of things. So I would, I would encourage you to, you know, get those, get some bleach, get the alcohol and wipe down. So yes, um, for me, I, well, I'm not shaking hands and I like this because, you know, I have always said that as entrepreneurs, 
you have to train your customers to do business in the way that you want business done. And so on the bright side of this, if you have always wanted to automate things like payments online, um, purchases online, and people have been resistant, you feel like your customers have been resistant to that, this is the perfect time to roll those out, okay? Because nobody wants to be infected and people understand. So if you said, you know, like naturally, Natty, like, you know, you know, stop taking cash, cash carrying the virus as well. They're talking about that. So begin taking payments online via JAD. You can do that. There's also, you can't get this right away, but you can begin the process. There's also Payoneer. P-A-Y-O-N-E-E-R. So if you go to Payoneer.com, Payoneer.com allows you to open an account with them. They'll house your money. You have a bank card. You can use your bank card in any store, um, your debit card. In any store, you can use it at the ATMs here, etc. And you can invoice people through Payoneer. They pay and the money goes into that holding account for you, which you can then access through debit card, through ATM, and that sort of thing. So that's something that you can begin looking into. Um, JAD also allows you to send that payment link directly to people in wherever those persons are in the world. So it doesn't matter where they are. You have a JAD account, you can contact JAD, and you can create JADs which are like payment, um, payment requests, right, for a product or service. And you can have people pay that way with their credit and debit card. So this is a good time to create policies that have the ability to train your customers about how to do business more efficiently so that as we begin to transition out this uncertain time, your customers are already trained as to how to do business with you, okay? How to do business with you. Any other questions or comments? So let's see, I don't know, how can I see who I have? Oh, I can't see who I have on, on Facebook, um, but hello and thank you for joining me. Unlike Instagram, I don't see names unless people are commenting. So that's another thing, in-house policies, lots of bins, that sort of thing. Now, I also want to talk about the fact that as business owners, we do not do a lot of risk management. And so this situation has really brought to light the importance of contingency planning. That's just a fancy way of talking about what if. So as small business people, we kind of, you know, might, you, you just go from like day to day, right? Because it's like you've seen it like a hustle. But if you want to scale and you want to grow, you have to always think about the what ifs and how will I prepare for the what ifs? So what if I can't get product? This is something you should be thinking about all the time. And what I would challenge you to do is write a contingency plan. Now it sounds all fancy and so on, but it's not that fancy. Just get a pen and some paper and think about the things that are very important in your business. So let's say that you have an employee. Uh, most small businesses, they maybe only have one. What if that person gets sick. And here's a good interjection. Even the big companies are allowing their employees to work from home. Now, if you have like an admin or a secretary, you know you can begin having that conversation about if things become difficult, then you know you can work from home and these are the things that you have to adhere by, okay? That sort of thing. But you need to have a what if. What if, I cannot get my stock. You need to have a list of alternative suppliers, a list of, and you need to find out what are their payment options. So suppose they want money wired, do you have the cash? 
And if not, then they can't be part of your contingency measure. If you need to put it on your credit card, then only people who accept credit cards can be part of your contingency measure. You want to think about what if, this is a big, big one, what if I become ill, how is my money gonna be made? Anybody thought about that? Tell me if you've been thinking about that. What if you become ill? How is your money going to be made? So who can answer that for me? How's your money gonna be made? Have you thought about it or no? So if you've thought about it or worried about it, send me a comment here, and let me know. And let's see, what if? Because many of us, you are the talent in your business. So unfortunately, we're like the talent and still the owner, right? So it's a double whammy if you become ill. So what's your contingency measure? Do you have enough cash on hand? to, hi Rasriel, hi Hassan. Do you have enough cash on hand to keep you through if you are ill? And this doesn't have anything to just do with any coronavirus. This is in general, you can just become ill. You could have the cold, you could have you know, some illness befall you. Have you considered, especially those of you who are full-time in your business, and even those of you who are not full-time but rely on the additional income of your business to do certain things. Maybe that's the money that helps send your child to college. Maybe that's the money that pays a, a piece of a loan. That's the money that does these things. What is your contingency measure for when you are unable to work because you are ill? Does anybody have a contingency plan? So my contingency plan has been to have savings set aside for like two months if I cannot work that can pay bills and feed me and my children and so on. But another thing we have to begin thinking about when we talk about scaling, which is what I really do, is that's why systems are important. So how can the work go on? And that is also why additional revenue streams are important. That's part of the business model. Because if you are the talent, so you are the person doing the here, selling, making the, like, what's gonna happen? You have to have other ways to create money that are outside of you, the person. So even if I am unwell, my courses are online, they'll sell, right? So, you know, um, somebody can request a business, a business plan and I have a team that I can work with and they can put that out for me with minimal assistance from me, my review, my standards, that sort of thing. But they can do that. Do you have a team? Do you have additional money saved up? Do you have additional streams of revenue? You must have multiple streams of revenue. I can't say that enough. So y'all are so quiet. Somebody say something now. <laughs> or give me some encouragement. Give me something, some kind of hat, something to know that y'all are listening, something. So how many people, if you have thought of a contingency measure, if you are unwell, tell me yes. If you have not, there's no shame in it, you know, we all have to learn and this, this happens. Tell me no. And tell me what is the contingency measure for yourself? Because you are the heart of your business. Thank you for the hearts. You are the heart of your business. And so when you are unwell, even if you are not the talent in your business, you are the brains of the business. So how does the business keep moving? This is something you need to give some thought to, okay? And after you've thought it through, you need to begin implementing. And so I think that on certain times, like these times that we are in, they are useful in that they allow us to do introspection on things that we may not have thought about before. 
so that as we move forward, we can be more resilient in, and sustainable in terms of business. You want to be sick, home lying down, no money coming in, you broke. Then the competition and eat you up. The competition eat at you up. So let's talk about, you know, how can you be more sustainable and more resilient as a business owner who is just starting out small? Now, sometimes you can't afford employees, but, you know, everybody who has been to a workshop <laughs> coaching by Tamu, they know that my child is my employee. And let's call him intern because I don't always pay him. <laughs> and so you have to find ways to, you know, get the help that you require with the resources that you have. And sometimes those resources are our children. And let me tell you something. Damon Dash once said, I am not hustling for anything else but my last name. I'm hustling for my last name. That means I'm hustling so that I can have generational wealth and so that my children don't have to go out and beg nobody no job. You understand? Also, when you engage your children or, you know, nieces, nephews, whomever, they gain skills that they cannot gain if they were somewhere at Value Mart, a supermarket, bagging, cashing, because they have to be agile. They have to be, you know, be perform on the high pressure, you make them do things like invoicing, you make them do things like billing, you make them put out your social media, you know them young people, them even better at social media than you anyway, you make them do those things that can free up your time. You also tell them how the business works so that if something does happen, and I think it doesn't matter, they can, let me tell you something, I have three study guides, and I remember when my study guides were made at TDC, they used to be copied and bound. Then I got my own binder to save money and binding machine. And let me tell you, my children were small, like eight and nine or something like that. And they would be right here on my living room floor putting together books, okay? So trust me, no matter how small your children are, they can assist in some way, and it teaches them the value of hard work. It also shows them like the trajectory, like how, what it takes in order to grow a venture, and not that, you know, they just take in money from you like an ATM machine. No. So employ, <laughs> employ the help that is around you with your children, etc. cetera. Um, I give my son a stipend. Oh, he's quit, by the way. But he's allowed to quit because he has exams coming, but he's quit on me. But you know your children can never really quit because you can just make them do what you require. But around, employ people around you, as in use their skills, especially your children. If you have cis people you can trust and people that you can direct well. That's one way to have business continuity. Another way is to begin writing down the policies or processes in your business. So for instance, let's say like Narissa, she does a uh, live and uh, she has a method of when and how often I'm assuming, right, when and what she decides to put on her website and she has her power hours and all of this. But if you had to hand that over to someone and you were on well, they, wouldn't, they would still need you. So now is the time to begin documenting how things must be done. So um, you have a, a thing saying how to have a, update the website weekly. These are the items that go, the top sellers or the lowest sellers. This is the process, the password, the da, da, da. these are the steps. So that you can just hand that over to somebody if you are unwell or you don't have to be unwell. 
you can have your time employed in other things. You don't have to be unwell, you know, right? But we're talking about uncertain times. So you need to begin documenting your policies. Did anybody think about that, documenting policies? Yes, no, right? Document what has to be done. Let's say you have a sparkle party. Narissa has a sparkle party. Um, then, Narissa, you need to write down, well, when I have sparkle parties, like um, I used to be a manager, uh, well, operations supervisor and HR person for a major retailer and in the U.S. And when you do fairs and events, they have an actual planogram where it shows, and I do this for my trainings as well, it shows where um, everything goes. So if you have events, do you have a map of how you want your event to look? Like where the tables go, where the projectors go, does the picture wall go here? So you have to begin thinking about documenting your processes, documenting your systems, if indeed you want to be able to continue business without your person in the event that not just you, if you have employees, if they become unwell, what are you gonna do? So does anyone have any questions on business continuity, um, policies, creating policies, systems and processes, anything like that, now would be the time to ask. So while I wait for your questions, and I haven't forgotten you all on Coaching by Tamu, thank you for joining me over there on Facebook, and thank you as well for those of you on Instagram, all right? Now, while I wait to see if you have any questions, I want to talk about the business model strategy session and one page business plan strategy session on Thursday. Yeah, March 12th. I think the first flyer said May 12th, but that was a typo. Hi, Nikisha Peets. How are you? Welcome. I'm Dr. Tamu, and we were talking about business continuity in uncertain times. And just to run it down for you again, and those of you who are just joining, we talked about things like supply chain diversity, stocking up to prevent stock outs, allaying fears by communicating subtly and not so subtly about your protection um, plans. I'm challenging in-house policies. What are your in-house policies? Moving things from face-to-face to online, automating payments. I talked about some ways that payments can be automated and some vendors that can automate payments no matter where you are in the world. Um, we talked about risk management and contingency planning. The fact that it's important to begin writing down your processes, systems, procedures, so that you can turn those over to people in the event that you are unwell or someone who is key on your staff is unwell, someone else knows how to do what they do or how to do what you do. I talked about contingency planning in terms of how you going to live if you're sick and you ain't got no money. Like, you know, so what is the plan for that? How are you creating money through additional revenue streams? So the business model canvas and one page business model workshop we are going to be looking, one page business plan, one page business plan. We are going to be looking at things like revenue streams and value and understanding the strategy that is required to create a system that runs an efficient business. So some people, you, you get up and you do business because that's how hustling goes. We all do it. But in order for your business to be sustainable and have continuity, there is a science to it, like a system. And that system is the business model. And that is the strategy piece that we'll be talking about in our online workshop on Thursday, coming on Thursday, March 12th. We're also, but I'm also going to show you 
what it means to create a one-page business plan, how you move easily from creating a business model to a one-page business plan, and the, the situations in which or when you should be presenting a one-page business plan. And so um, you're going to get an e-copy for download of the business model canvas, the value proposition canvas, and the one-page business plan example and template for yourself so that you can follow along with me in our interactive live business model session. All right, that's on Thursday coming, March 12th, and it's just 20 US dollars. It's not a huge investment, and it's a great fundamental course to begin to build everything else on and to be able to look at your business with clarity or to be able to take your business idea and have it um, implemented in a systematic way. And key to that business model is this whole concept of multiple streams of revenue. And so you'll be brainstorming multiple streams of revenue for each of your businesses while you're on the live with me. And after the session, even if you register for the session and you're unable to make it, it is recorded and it will be sent to you. But if you can make it, that's the best because you can be on there commenting, asking questions, interjecting. I can see you if, I, if you want me to see you. If you don't, you can hide your video. I'll be sharing my screen. It's going to be quite exciting. I love online teaching. I really do. I've been doing it for over a decade now, and it's very, very effective. All right, so I'm going to close down this live. If you want to see what's happening with me, just go to tamilcoaching.com. Um, the Business Model Canvas workshop is in products. And so if you want to join, just send me a DM or inbox me and I'll send you the link and you can uh, make that payment and join me on Thursday. So if I had some final words, I would say the final words in this time of uncertainty, they are the final words that should guide you in all times and that you have to strategize in order to build scalable businesses that are sustainable and that can withstand shocks. And so that's what I have to say, all right? So be systematic. Hi, Juice King, you're joining. Oh, I forgot to take my turmeric shot. So Juice King makes um, a, tumor, a bottle with turmeric, ginger, I forget what else is in it, and you take it like medicine. And yesterday I was feeling uh, low, and I took my shot, and I'm like, peppy right about now. <laughs> so big up Juice King, thank you for joining. Juice King, you come when I'm ready to go. But since you're on, do you have a question for me? You just woke up? Well, that means you've been working really hard. But Juice King is one of my top fans. He's always supporting me, and I'm really grateful for the support. So he just woke up. Okay, so he says it's ginger, turmeric, and lemon. So, and it's awesome. And you can, you know, hop on over to Juice King's page and, you know, order from Juice King. Now, since people are here, Use this opportunity to tell people what you do and, yes, tell people what you do so that we can begin to network. And, you know, I believe in networking. I'm doing even more study and work on networking because I understand that networking is what it is required, especially for small Caribbean businesses to do big business, to scale big business and to do business abroad. And so that's why I'm passionate about networking and talking about networking. And that's why my next event is a networking event. All right. So Yasan says, enough respect, Juicekin. Yeah, Yasan. Yasan, tell us what's up with you, man. That's Ras Rio, sorry. So he's Ras Rio on here. So Ras Rio, what can we 
you know, look out for you or from you, you know, so that people can begin looking up what you're about. I know right now, Rasvio is um, with Tradera. All right, so Azariah wants Kevin's number for Juice King. But Kevin, you're in hot stuff. Kevin, do I have your number? I, I can't even check. Send me a DM with your number so I can send it to um, Azariah Johari. So she wants to get some of your product. So send me your number. I feel like I have it, but just send it to me still in the DM so I can send it here to her. So questions. Somebody come ask me some questions. Come, you know, talk to me. You, what Y'all sick? What's wrong? <laughs> What's wrong? All right. So the juice king, I'll give it to you. I'll send you a private message um, afterwards with the Juice King's number. Juice King is here. He, okay, so Azariah is on Facebook, Coaching by Tamu, and Juice King is on Instagram here. So Juice King is saying cold press juices and herbal meds, and it's all 100% organic. Yes, and without sugars and that sort of thing. So they're really good, you know, if you're into health and we should all be into health. All right, so Ras Rio on Instagram, um, he is, you're welcome. He is saying he's an entrepreneur. Oh yes, he, I'm developing a transportation service called Around Town Shuttle Service. And if you live in St. Kitts, you would have seen Around Town Shuttle Services you know, blowing up the transportation scene. And he is looking into getting more people to think about residual income. Great, which is what we're talking about, not so, Rasrio. Well, Rasrio and I went to school. So, you know, I know him as, I won't say what I know you as, but he rests the name is Yasan, all right? And he also sells CBD-based products you know, medical marijuana-based products, therapeutic uh, marijuana-based products. That's what Rasrio is into. But this is a good example of multiple streams of income. And I want to take Rasrio's example and show you something. Now, sometimes, right, people feel that you're not a true entrepreneur if you don't have like a business. But there is something called your personal brand. And you are the value. And everything you do is like a subsidiary of you. And so what Ras Rio has done is create multiple streams of income from his own intellect. Okay? So he has a round town shuttle. That's a business. I know he's doing Tradera. That's a business. And he's also doing the CBD. That's a business, right? And those are multiple ways to make money. The good thing is that the CBD and the Tradera, these things are what you call, I don't like to say passive income, no? because passive income makes happier on Instagram. Passive income makes it sound like you don't have to do anything for it to work. It just works. That ain't so. Like any other business, you have to develop it out. You have to use your business model. You have to grow it out. But once it's grown and you do your marketing, it doesn't need you. So you don't have to be in store selling a CBD product. Instead, you can, you can have that in retailers, um, distributors. And if you have noticed a number of my clients are doing that. So I'm always about scaling. So we have tea healers brand, um, tea healer blends, right? That's it, right? Yeah, tea healers. And Khadidra is in like, Khadidra was part of my Jumpstart program last year, September. Khadidra is now in like five um, retailers with more to go. We have Cremas clients. They are in like three retailers, more coming. We have um, La Amiga Simas in many places, more coming. 
Um, we have, well, we know that Yafin and Florial Foods, I mean, before she met me, she was popping. So I can't take credit for her, but she, we always, my clients were always talking about scaling and growing. So that is part of passive income in that it is passive, meaning that you don't have to be the one doing the selling in bulk. You are working through retailers, distributors, partnerships, and all of that is part of the business model, showing how all of these components, like strategic alliances, etc., come to play in order for you to do scalable business. Now, I want you to understand as well that when it comes to scaling, a lot of it is about mindset. So you can't scale, you cannot scale if you think you cannot scale, okay? And so I am the coach you come to when you want to begin doing the big, big business, okay? You want to begin the process of having an actual um, model or foundation for you to do big business. All right, so Azariah, I sent the, the number for Juice King in the chat. So for everyone, because he's put it out here, it's 663-7443 or 665-2009. And Ras Rio is at WhatsApp, 665-8459. That's the sync, it's number. And 226-344-9572. All right. So any other comments or questions? So once again, multiple streams of income. They can be related to the core business. They may not be related to the core business. But the idea is like everything to diversify your risk in unstable times or in uncertain times. And business in general is uncertain. But we are seeing how external shocks that are so far removed from our shores initially have or have an impact on our ability to make money and so that is why contingency planning and sustainability planning and thinking strategically are key components whether you have a thousand employees or one a thousand employees or one so the the the, the concepts never change right? Strategy is key. All right, people, anything else? All right. So Rasrio says it takes a serious paradigm shift. Um, yes, because mindset change or people change in general, that's the hardest change. You know, we would say you can't teach an old dog new trick, tricks. That's what we would say. But the truth is you can, if you are willing the mindset shift starts with you. Um, in my Level Up Ladies session this Thursday, I asked my participants, what is the one thing they feel that being in this particular program with me has um, done for them? What's the most positive impact? And all of them said it was in increasing their mindset, widening their mindset to global partnerships and doing business in a big, big way. And strangely enough, not strangely, that is my mission. I want to grow revenue by growing mindsets and networks. So that's important to me. That really is my mission. And because if you don't change your mindset, you can't grow. That's the prerequisite. All right, so that's it for me. Thank you for joining me. Oh, Miss Evelyn, you're joining now, I'm finished, all right? So thank you for joining. I'm done for the day. Let me just run back over some of the things we spoke about because people are you know, going in and out. I'm Dr. Tamu Petra Brown, founder of Innovative Education and Training Solutions and Coaching by Tamu and Today, we were talking about business continuity in uncertain times. 
we spoke about the coronavirus specifically, but the truth is that we face many uncertain times in the world, and it will become more so over time because we everything is collapsed. It's like time and space are collapsed now, right? And so we talked about inventory management, supply chain diversity. We talked about all that means alternative suppliers, considering ordering from within CARICOM, okay? We talked about um, multiple streams of income and thinking about what would you do if you are unable or have stocked out of your inputs. So if you do here and you sell braids or whatever, you don't have any, what you're going to do? So you have to begin thinking multiple streams of income. We talked about in-house policies. What are the in-house policies? Like some of my clients who you know, work with clients one-on-one, -on -one, they won't accept you if you have a cold. I, they, they have um, you know, wipes available, disposable things available, masks available for their employees. I talked about perception being reality and the fact that you have to allay people's fears through overt and not so overt actions, which just means you, have, you can do it subtly, like you know, taking pictures of yourself and your team on social media with your coronavirus proofed environment. You can be overt by changing your policies online, communicating those quite clearly. So you can do that. We talked about contingency planning. What do I do to buffer my revenue when um, there are uncertain times like illness? And like I said, illness doesn't have to be corona. How are you making money when you, you, you're down and out, when you're sick, when you're tired, when you're burnt out? You know, because all of these things are wellness issues. You don't have to be physically sick. You can just be burnt out. So how does business go on? And I talked about utilizing your resources around you like relatives. My, you know, everybody who's a coaching by Tamil workshop goer knows that my poor son is my intern, right? <laughs> and he does the social media, etc. And I talked about the benefits of involving your children in your business. And we spoke about documenting processes and policies in order um, for continuity. Because if people don't know what you do, your expectations, for instance, um, Narissa was on and Narissa has a sparkle party. But if Narissa is unwell and someone else has to do her sparkle party, can, is there some document that says, well, we need a white rug, we need a picture wall, I have to have my product set like this, like where is the documentation? So you need to begin writing documentation for key processes in order to pass them on to somebody in the event that you are not there. You have to begin doing things like big business does things. All right. So those are some of the things that we spoke about. Of course, you can watch this on the replay. If you want to um, inquire or book the business model workshop, which is this Friday and the one page business plan, business model and one page business plan workshop, which is this Thursday, March 12th, um, send me a DM and I'll send you the link. It's just 20 US and just go to tamilcoaching.com products. I put all my products in one space now. And so I'm excited about that. So you can browse and see. So it's an hour about Thank you for joining me. Instagram is telling me I have 26 seconds remaining. So thank you. Be safe. Be well. You know, and be strategic. Bye. All right. Thank you so much, my Coaching by Tamil people, for coming on and participating. I appreciate you. Bye-bye.